Hi, today I'm going to be showing you the basics of Google App Inventor, which is a great free product from Google that allows you to develop apps for the Android platform extremely easily and quickly with no previous programming experience. So anybody can make an app using this software, providing you're willing to put a few minutes aside just to learn the basics. So first of all, just go on to the App Inventor website and basically what you'll need to do is download the software onto your computer and then also make sure you have the latest version of Java. So click on Get Started and scroll down to install the App Inventor setup software and depending on which operating system you're running just click on either of these. I'm going to click on Instructions for Windows and then you basically just need to click on Download the Installer and then it should take about a minute or two to download, it's not too big and then after that you just want to go onto the Java test page just to make sure that you've got the latest version of Java because this will allow you to run the emulator which is basically a copy of the Android operating system that will run on your computer just so you can test the app and make sure it's working properly alternatively you can actually use your own Android phone and connect it to your computer but just for convenience I prefer using the emulator so you'll need to create an account after that just so you can actually sign into this and then after you've done that you just want to click on the my projects tab up here but as I'm already signed in I can just click on the link that I've got up here in Chrome so the first time you actually sign in you probably won't be taken to this interface here you'll be taken to the my projects page which is just up here at the top and I've got a list of projects here that I've created in the past and you won't have any listed here you'll just be creating your first project the first time you sign in basically so to create a new project just click new and then type in whatever you want I've actually already made a project called tutorial so I'm just going to open that uh, scroll down and click on it there and this will take you onto the main interface for making the apps and this is actually the visual editor the more advanced blocks editor that will actually let you uh, assign commands to each particular button or any other object that you add to the editor and that basically is the whole concept of the App Inventor software assigning a command to a particular object so you'll see here in the main interface that you've got screen one and but screen one basically encompasses everything in the program it encompasses everything in the app that you make because at the moment in Google App Inventor you can't make more than one screen so everything will be a sub menu from screen one over in the component part here and basically your components are all of these different things here you're, you've got buttons, you've got canvases, images, labels, loads of different things lots of different media things, animation and all of these can be used for very very unique things although you can only make basic apps really in App Inventor so the first thing that I'm going to show you is basically the concept of assigning a command to a button so that when you click it it will show a picture that was previously hidden so all you need to do is just drag and drop the button into the main screen here it's as simple as that and it will come up saying button 1 underneath screen 1 as I said everything will be a subcomponent of screen 1 and basically we're going to rename this to click for picture because when we click this it's going to come up with a picture that wasn't there before and then also just go on to text here and we'll also change this to click for picture and just bear in mind that you can also do this so it comes up with a random picture but that's actually slightly more advanced and requires a bit more fiddling around with the blocks editor so I might actually do that in a future tutorial just a quick one just showing how to do that because it's not really most one of the most important things in this software doing random commands although it can be useful at times so basically we've now got our button and we've renamed it here what we need to do now is drag in an image right underneath there and we're going to rename this to just image get rid of the one on the end and we're going to set the actual source of the picture to a file from your computer so click on none over here underneath picture and then click add and then choose file and then just choose anything you want bearing in mind that the file has to be a very small actual size because the image size that we get to work with within each screen is actually very small and if you take in a big picture like this one here my logo which is 600 by 600 it's going to completely cover the whole screen and actually go off the edge of the boundaries too 
So I'm going to choose a very small file, just 200 by 100 pixels, this little Tech 4D logo. I'm just going to import that in. I've actually already imported it, so it's going to come up saying, do you want to overwrite it? So I'm just going to do that for the sake of it. So we now have the picture imported into the visual editor, and you can see it's right underneath click for picture. But the problem is, we want this to actually be hidden before we click the button, and after we click it, to actually magically appear. So what we want to do is uncheck the visible box right here, and you'll see it will disappear. And something that will be useful to know in future tutorials is that if you click Display Invisible Components in Viewer up at the top here, it will actually show it again, regardless of the fact that it's actually invisible over here. And this just helps for editing things and knowing where different things are, uh, so you don't really lose track of where everything is. So basically, we want to assign a command to click for picture, so that when you touch it on the touch screen, it will actually come up with the picture. So for this, we need to open the blocks editor. And this has a slightly more advanced and daunting interface than the visual editor, but it is still actually very easy to use. And you just need to make sure that you've got the latest version of Java installed as this runs off the Java platform. And you can see here, I've actually already got the emulator running that I talked about earlier. I'm not going to actually bring it up for the moment, just to avoid any confusion. And that's something that you're going to be using in the future, if you decide to follow, follow this series of tutorials. Just so you can actually test the app and make sure that everything's working as you expect. And then you can package it for your phone and actually test it on your real phone, unless you're already doing that. So now, you can see here, immediately it comes up with uh, when screen one initialize. I actually put that there before, so you don't need to worry about that really. But just to give you a brief background of this first, this actually lets you set a command for when you start up the app the first time. So for example, I could set it so that when you start up the app, it comes up with a picture, although it's a kind of a random thing. I don't think you'd really want to do that, so I'm just going to get rid of that for the moment. And right, now, you've got built in here on the side, and this is basically lots of different things that will enable you to construct commands. All of these things will basically let you create a series of commands that will perform pretty much anything you want. Although you've got to bear in mind that you can only make basic apps really in App Inventor. So we don't need to worry about these for the moment, although they will be extremely useful in further tutorials, particularly with anything like uh, making a random picture appear. So we're going to click on My Blocks, and this basically comes up with all of the components that you have in your project, and enables you to do lots of different things with them. So for example, we've got our image here. I can set the image height to anything I want when a specific thing happens. And that event that happens could be anything from clicking a button to basically uh, the app starting for the first time, or a timer running out, anything like that, you can basically rearrange all of these different variables. So what we're going to focus on though is the click for picture and this is our button. So what we want is when click for picture click, so it's fairly intuitive, when you click the button you want a command to be performed, to be executed, and in our case we want the picture to uh, basically become visible from being previously invisible. So to do that we want to click on image which is the image that we've put in and set image visible to and then click here logic true so basically clicking anywhere in this kind of light green area here comes up with all these different little things for the moment I'm just going to be showing you the logic one just click on that and it comes up with a nice drop down menu for you so basically what we said is when you click the button the image will become visible we set the visibility variable to true and as you can see this blue thing here slots in with this little kind of clip on the end of the green thing and basically this is a nice and easy way of showing you where things are possible because uh, sometimes a certain set of commands aren't actually possible in a certain order you've just got to make sure that everything slots in perfectly for example this uh, red bit here that slots into the blue bit and you're just going to make sure they all click together and that basically makes sure that all the commands are performed correctly. So now uh, we're going to go on to new emulator and just pretend I've clicked that. I've actually already got it open here 
and it will come up with this uh, basically copy of the Android OS as I said it would. And then what you want to do is click on connect to device and then click on emulator 5554. I believe it's the same on all computers, the number on the end. And if it's not, then just click on the one that comes up. If you connect your own phone to it, then it'll also come up with your phone. So basically what it's doing now is connecting to the phone and it's going to send the app that we've just made to it and we're going to test the fact that when we click the button it'll actually set the image to visible and you'll see that when the app actually starts up for the first time the image won't be visible and that will basically be the default state for it because we went into the options for it and set visibility to uh, well we unchecked the visibility box so here we are on screen one and it's now connected we've got our button here click for picture and the image is nowhere to be seen. As soon as we click it, it appears. There you go. Tech 4D. The logo is right there. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. This is basically just the absolute basics of it. And I'm going to be going over more complicated things soon. I just hope this has got you accustomed to the interface. And how you can see that using the blocks editor here, we can assign a command to an event happening. So thank you for watching. And I will catch you next time.